Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to True Truth Channel. Um, today we're going to talk about um, what the Bible says about transgender or transsexual, transsexual behavior. My apologies. The first reference to human sexuality in all of the Bible occurs in the book of Genesis. Here we see that God created the first man from dust of the earth and he created woman from man. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Genesis 1 verse 27. The Bible clearly teaches that God is the one who assigned the sexes. Notice that God didn't do in Genesis. He never asked Adam or Eve if they were comfortable or happy with their assigned sex. He never created multiple wives for Adam or multiple husbands for Eve. And he never asked Adam or Eve what their sexual orientation or sexual preference is. Instead, God created only two sexes, male and female, and he created the first marriage institution, one man and one woman. God did it that way because that's how God wanted his creations to operate. Anything outside of God's plan for sexuality is a perversion orchestrated by the greatest pervert in the universe, Satan. We see that the Mosaic law clearly prevented cross-dressing. The woman shall not wear what that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on woman garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. God's word clearly and boldly condemns cross-dressing and the desire to change a person's God-given sex. To do so is an abomination to God, and it is sheer rebellion against the design God put forth at the beginning of creation. It is like saying, "You made me this way, but I don't care what you will, um, but I don't care what your will for my life. Instead, I want to do what I want to do." God clearly puts forth special consideration and efforts when creating any of us, as He indicated to the prophet Jeremiah, "Before I formed thee in the belly." I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. In addition, we see that acting effeminate is listed as serious category of sin, that unless a person repents and believes on the Lord Jesus, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Know ye not that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, no idolaters, nor adulterers, no effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 to 10. The Greek word used for effeminate literally means for a man to act feminine or soft. God's words say that acting in such a way that is contrary to your assigned sex is a wicked sin. Even though God's words condemn this behavior, many will try to lie about it. Here are some lies you may hear in an attempt to convince the masses that Jesus is okay with the transgender movement or that it's a normal behavior. God loves everyone. We're all God's children, therefore it's okay to change your sexu sexual identity or cross-dress, right? Wrong. God does love everyone, and he even revealed his love for us when he sent his son to die on the cross while we were, hit, while we were yet sinners. Nevertheless, the Bible clearly teaches that we must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Those who do not repent and trust Christ will go to hell, and after the judgment they will face eternal conscious torment in the lake of fire. People can't help it. They have hormone imbalances or other causes of this condition. How could a loving God send them to hell for something they can't help? I don't doubt for a minute that people engaging in transsexuality generally desires to be or act like another gender. But consider this. A thief generally desires to have your material possession. A homosexual generally desires sexual contact with the same sex. Does that make it right? Of course not. Even in alleged cases of hormone imbalances, the proper thing to do would be to seek treatment to honor your God-given sex, not change it to what you want. Remember, there is one thing God will never accept for your sin, and that's an excuse or an alibi. We will accept repentance 
um, I'm sorry, he will accept the repentance and confession of it. Not only are many forms of sexual perversion accepted or celebrated, you're cast as a bigot or weirdo if you disagree. You can be mocked, insulted, threatened, or and so forth for merely disagreeing with the transgender movement. Today's society reflects the word of the prophet Isaiah. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Isaiah 5 verse 20. Isn't it amazing how a person standing up for God's word, something good, is rebuked and called evil or bigoted, whereas individuals engaging in transgender, cross-dressing, or homosexuality, evil, are labeled as brave heroes. The Bible teaches that we are all wicked sinners who have fallen short of his glory. I know that I would, wouldn't trust the best minute I ever lived to get me to heaven. I'm a sinner, and I'm only made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. Christians should treat every person with love. If I see a man dressed like a woman at the store, I'm not going to hurl insults or tell them that they're going to hell. I'll be polite and respectful, just like I would with anyone else. However, I'll never wink at sin. I'll never condone or agree with this activity. I'll never suggest to someone it is anything less than an abomination to God. If, something jo if someone jokes about dressing like a woman, I make it known that I respectfully disagree. I'll also share the gospel when I have the opportunity to do so. The Bible teaches that transgender behavior is a sin against God. Jesus is the only hope for a sinner. No matter how sinful you've lived, Christ stands ready to forgive and every sinner who turns to him. I pray that you'll be saved today and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Thank you so much for listening um, and tune again for my next vid.